Hey, friends, family, and fanatics. Planet Mitch here from Giveaway Rocket. And it is Monday, and I've been failing off and on. And that happens, right? We're human. My goal was to do Facebook Lives every day, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. There's dust on my computer. 10 a.m. Hi, Tony! 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, thanks for popping in, Tony. Thanks for every... Oops! I'm sorry. I just kicked the cat. I didn't know it was underneath me. Um, so, case studies. And uh, Tony's here from Australia, so thanks for tuning in. Please comment and tell me where you're from. It's kind of fun. Ricardo's here. Hi, Ricardo. Thanks for letting me know. I was just having a really great conversation. Tony, I introduced you to uh, Brett this morning. Um, Brett's... My, my chat window's over on this window. There's Brett. Brett's here. Having an absolutely awesome conversation with Brett about what he's doing. And my hair looks terrible. Uh, <laughs> Brett and Tony are both doing local marketing stuff and Brett is doing some <coughs> excuse me some fantastic stuff with an app that he's building and I'm not going to give all that away because that's not my secret but the conversation's been fascinating and I'm really eager to see where Brett takes his uh product uh, I think it's I think, <laughs> I think he's got he's got his hands on something that's really going to go crazy and Sharita's here. Good morning, Sharita. Yes, every day is a lot. But that's the whole point, is to be disciplined. And, you know, somebody, somebody you and I know, Sharita, says that... Um, what, were, what were his two words? Discipline and consistency. Yeah. Uh, and I believe in consistency. I just haven't been doing it very much recently. <laughs> so... You know, we're human. That's life. Uh, but local stuff, local marketing, and I'm going to get to the case study conversation in a second uh, because case studies are very important. And I'm really fascinated. Tony and Brett, you guys really, really need to talk together because there are so many opportunities for doing, and it's going to happen again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I didn't do my vocal warm-ups. <laughs> I need to do that every day, don't I? Uh, but the local marketing opportunities are just absolutely wild. And, and having this conversation with Brett about what he's doing, uh, I, it almost makes me feel like what I need, part of what I need to do is to do more live or podcast kind of stuff. Because I get into these conversations... And it's just so fascinating to see what people are doing and how they're growing their business and where they struggle and where where they're learning and growing. Um, and, I mean, it, the conversation actually with Brett started on this case study that I'm going to mention when I ever freaking get to it. Um and the conversation just kept rolling and finding out what he's doing and, and how he's trying to grow his business. And uh, I probably can't find it really fast. So I'll just paraphrase. So he's wanting to do, he's done eight contests and what he's doing, but he wants to do contests for local businesses, as well as some of the other marketing and then stuff. And I won't go into all the details because it's not my story to tell. Uh, but... When we got to the conversation about doing giveaways and what to charge potentially and that kind of stuff, he's like, I'm absolutely convinced that giveaways are the fantastic way to do local marketing. And, and of course, bells ran off and cash register rang in my head. And he's the kind of guy I want to talk to because he's already believing, right? Sharita, for example, is somebody that I've been dragging along and and she's slowly starting to understand. And part of the conversation Brett and I also had was that this is an education process. 
And I've talked to Tony about that because Tony's trying to do the same kind of thing in his local market. And the people, Sharita, as an example, it doesn't quite ring the bell. There's a physical bell. Uh, that people need to be doing this kind of marketing because they just don't understand the values and the benefits. And that's part of the hard part, which I'm struggling with in myself, is to get people to understand the value as opposed to traditional marketing. I mean, I, I walked into a restaurant, for example, and <clears throat> Brett asked me if I do local contests, and I... I happened to be in a local restaurant. This was last year. And I asked the gentleman, I said, do you do, do you have an email list? Are you gathering emails from your clients? Because the guy that was at the cash register happened to be the owner. I could tell. And he said, actually, no, I don't. Why should I do that? <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. Here you are, a restaurant. you got trying to do business he's got a sign on the wall that the local magazine had said there were the number one italian blah 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 whatever and i'm like how are you retaining clients and he said well they just keep coming back because they like the food and i said well <laughs> come, come to the modern age bub let's go into the point where you're gathering their data i mean what's the old traditional way right uh those little cards where you get punch stamps if you come back and a repeat customer right uh, that's one way of doing it but why not get their email address why not get a way of contacting them and a lot of businesses I mean I get these value pack things that they call them with about 10 20 different coupons that's one way of getting to people right that's a very traditional way Email and social media are the coming things, and that's where I think people need to be focusing. Uh, and what Brett's doing just absolutely is going to kill it, in my opinion, because he's doing a lot of that stuff with an app. <sighs> I shouldn't be giving away all the secrets, because I don't know how he's doing it. I don't know what, exactly what he's doing and how he's going to market it and how he's going to make money and all that kind of stuff. Um, but... And it takes a lot of effort, right? you got to have a programming staff and everything else involved. But anyway, contests are a great way to get people's attention. And I keep talking about the win aspect. It's win, 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 right? Because the contest brings in people that want to win something. Uh, it w it's great for the business because they're building an email list, which they can constantly market to. Uh, I've shown statistics over and over and over that contest people that come through either referrals or contests bring more money to the table per person than traditional marketing and that's the kind of thing that just doesn't ring true to many people because they haven't heard that before i mean a lot of people when i throw the statistic out that an email address according to people who know how to do email is worth a dollar per email per month. So again, if you start building an email list, say you get a thousand people on your email list, well, that's $12,000 in additional revenue over what you're doing now because you're talking to those people, you're offering them things. And if you start giving things away, you can grow your list. You can bring in people that are friends of friends, right? That, that friendship, that referral is worth more cash to you statistics have shown over and over and over that people that are referred spend more it's not hard to understand but most people don't realize that that's a fact it's not something i'm just making up <laughs> it's fact study after study has shown that people who are referred spend more money on that particular business so why aren't you doing this why are you waiting and i go back and Fourth. All right, so I started to talk about the case study. I'm preaching to the choir again because those of you who have listened to me before have heard me say many of those things, but I still think that some people need to hear them on a frequent place, place, basis. Uh, case study. All right, so over in the uh, Up Viral group, Wilco published a case study, and I'm going to switch over to it. Uh, just so you see part of it, let me switch to this and watch that it switches over. 
Uh, so I'm down here going through this case study, and this was a fantastic case study. One of the best I've seen because they did not only analyze some of the data, but they also did an interview with Dave. And it's a fantastic interview with a whole lot of stuff. There's they've actually broke it down and broken it down into multiple segments. But so the short story is that David at Bunky Life, whom I consulted with, by the way, so I had some little fingers in this pie, um, brought in $300,000 in sales, added 34,000 leads to his campaign, to his email addresses, to his business, and is a fantastic, fantastic result. And there's a lot of really cool data in here on how to make that happen. Things that David did differently than most contests are run. Most people simply throw up a contest. They say, hey, win this prize, and they just let it simmer. They let it sit and they pray that tools like UpViral and Gleam and whatever other tools that are out there are going to just make it go viral and make them absolutely... Tons of money, which doesn't really happen. So if you haven't seen this case study, it's on upviral.com. It's called Bunky Life Case Study. I will give you a link to that in the comments in this live feed. Um, so you can go over to upviral.com. I don't know if there's a direct link to it, whether they put it in the case study section or whatever there's in their menus. But I'll get you there. Uh, David did some fantastic stuff. Uh, this is a bunkie, by the way, for those of you who don't know what it is. It's basically a little mini house that has no heat, no air, no running water, no electricity. It's a $6,000 item, so you can put it in your backyard. It comes as a kit, so you can put it together yourself. There's... There aren't many pictures here, but this front section overhangs because there's a loft. So you can have a queen-size bed up there, and then down below you can have a little bit of furniture and stuff. Hey, thanks, Brett. Brett just posted in the link to the case study. Uh, and Brett and I started, like I said, started out talking about this, and he was giving me his feedback on what he's taken away from this. And you don't have to give away a $6,000 item, but David did so many things to get people revved up about this, especially, for example, many I've gone through some of the videos, but um, he did live broadcasts. He did seven of them in the month of February when the contest ran. And they did a two-day sale at the end of the contest. So if you didn't win, then they gave... The current model is a $7,000 deal. They've upgraded a little bit since last year. So it's really a $7,000 product. And what they did was they did a $1,000 off sale so that you could get it back down to last year's price. So those people that didn't win got the opportunity. And my face is covering this up, isn't it? I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that my face... Come on, drag over here. Uh, if you're reading through this, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and and so there's that that sale, for example, was a fantastic idea for getting people to buy after the case, right? After the after the campaign was over, it's, I think is a very brilliant idea. He also did Facebook Lives, and this section is the custom action section. And so what he did, <clears throat> excuse me, I really need to clear my throat before I start this. What he did was he did a series of seven Facebook Live events during the contest. And he posted a calendar so people knew when they were going to be. And as they did the lives, they did a secret word. So they added 
you see like here, this pink one right here. Watch how to build a bunky live stream episode number three. And in so and when people came to the contest or watched the Facebook Live, he said, hey, okay, the secret word is lamp. And he picked something out of the room that he was doing. And he said, now if you go after the broadcast is over and I get a few minutes to update the contest, there will be a custom action added. There'll be a, a special thing on the share page for you to click the button and answer a question. And that question is, what's the secret word? And today's secret word is lampshade. And when you answer that question properly, you'll get an extra 100 points. And those 100 points are really chances to win the $6,000 prize. Um, so some fantastic data here. I'm not going to give you all the secrets. I think you need to come in and read the case study and see what David did. I'm on the section right here uh, on social sharing and what David did to send out emails and stuff like that. Um, so this is there's some fantastic data in this case study. I highly advise you to go through this. Uh, things I will be adding to my training, of course, as I learn stuff from people, things that they do that are fantastic, I add those to what I teach you. Um, so make sure you spend a few minutes and go through this case study if you're interested at all. I think there's some advanced tips in here that not everybody that's starting their campaigns should be doing. Uh, but as Brett, for example, has got eight campaigns under his belt, he now is in the position where he can add some of this learning that he's doing from this to his campaigns. In the uh, Win Together program that I am doing, and I have another one starting in um, May, by the way, if you're interested, I'm going to turn that off now. Uh, if you're interested, I'm starting another one. And one of the things I've learned is that we, I think I taught too much in the first session. <laughs> I know that's hard to believe, but we did sessions. We've done six sessions now, and each one of them is two hours a piece. And I think, I think what we need to do is tone it back a little bit and, and maybe spread it out a little bit for those that are participating. Uh, but what we do is we spend the first week on planning and prize selection. The second week is getting into a tool like UpViral, which is my tool of choice, building the campaign. And as we go through both of those functions, we get feedback from all the other people that are participating. So it's not just me giving you feedback. It's good ideas that come from other people. At the end of the session, for example, in the in this episode, this episode number one of the Win Together program, after the fourth hour on the second second live feed, um, one of the gals, Monica, said, Mitch, could we make this go longer? <laughs> I'm like, we've been doing two hours today in conversation about what people have been picking on their prizes and how they're planning to do their contest. And she said, well, this is so much value. I want to just keep going. And I said, well, we we really have to just cut it off after two hours. Everybody's tired and hungry. I think two hours is enough. But that's the kind of value that, that we're doing. So many programs. Um, I just shared one with Brett, for example, on how to do local contests. That was done by um, Chris Towlin. And I can share that link with you, too. It's a, it's a, over on Udemy, and it's... I don't know, I think the price is with the link that I have is $9 or $10, so it's not very expensive. Um, but when you go through training like that, it's, it's very good comprehensive training, but you don't have the hands-on piece and you don't actually end up with something, right? So the struggle that most people have when they go through a training program is that, yes, that feels great and I've learned a lot, but then there's nothing for the execution side of it. And that's why I'm really, really happy about the Win Together program because we're freaking building the contests. We're running them as we go through this program. And then at the end, we're going to nurture your list and you're going to start making revenue. Monica, for example, 
was doing her contest for a client. So she's doing it on behalf of a client. The client is just jumping up and down excited because in the first two weeks, she got an, an additional $2,500 in revenue and she attributes directly to the contest that Monica is running for her. And so money starts pouring in and <laughs> that's the kind of stuff I love to hear, right? That's the whole freaking point is to build the thing and start getting results. So that's the thing that separates all of what I'm doing from what I was planning to do with my life was just teaching people, but I want to teach them and execute. And that makes a world of difference. Now, not everybody has had great results. There's a lot of people in the program today that are struggling because family and other things have taken them away from focusing on this, but they, they get to participate in the next one for free. Um, so I'm starting another program May 1st. If you are interested, Sharita, um, come on over. Tony's in the first program, and Tony wasn't able to get his program launched because things got in the way. That's okay. We're going to make it happen for you. And I think in episode number two of the Win Together program, I'm going to put some more accountability in there. Uh, what I want people to do is actually execute because that's where the value is. And I can't force anybody to do something, right? I can't force you to get off your took us and, and actually build your campaign. But that's where the value really comes in, in in this entire program. And you're learning, but you're executing at the same time. And if you pay me up front and you don't execute, then it doesn't do you any good. Uh, Tony says, first of May. Good. You're gonna, you're gonna kick ass on this one, Tony. I know you will, because we're gonna make it happen. So that's, I mean, that's, I don't think, once you've done this kind of program, and I hope to get some testimonials out of the people that are in version one, uh, to, to share with you the fact that once you freaking get it done, I mean, and Brett's another example. He's done eight contests now. He knows what he's starting to do. Uh, I didn't ask him about details and all that, but I'm sure some of them were a bit of a struggle at the beginning and possibly didn't work as well as he'd hoped. Uh, but he kept with it. And that's part of the thing you've heard me preach about multiple times is if you run one or two contests and they don't quite work the right way, you're learning along the process. You're finding out what works and what doesn't work and how to do things better. And the case study that I just showed you has so much gold in it, it is insane. Uh, I almost don't have to take my program. <laughs> nah. uh, some of the stuff that I teach is in what what is in this case study, but I teach a lot more than that. Oh, Tony, 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 shame on you. Tony says, may the 4th be with you. No, we're starting on May the 1st, not 4th. <laughs> uh, May the 1st is a Wednesday. May the 4th is a Saturday. Um, so we're starting on May 1st. So if you want to be involved in that, and I think I'll, each and every one of you should, and even Brett, I know you've got eight campaigns under your belt, but wouldn't it be nice to have some peer reviews, some other people giving you feedback about what you're doing not doing. I think you should be involved in this as well, Brett, if you're still here watching. Um, I didn't mean to plug you, but, you know, what the heck? <laughs> Specifically. So, today is Monday, I don't know, April 22nd, right? So, how many days? April has 30 days, right? So you have eight days to get in. The timer is ticking. If you want to get started, eight days. That's when we're going May 1st. So today is Monday. So that's Wednesday of next week. How many of you are in? Raise your hand. Say, yes, I'm in. Say, amen, bro. We're going to do this. I know Tony's in because... Tony's continuing from the last program. <sighs> Tony, you're going to have to get it done this time. Or you're out. I'm going to kick you out. 
if you don't get it done. I'm mean, aren't I? I have a good whip. Where's my whip sound? I need a whip sound. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I know I'm funny, or I think I'm funny. And that's part of what we do is try to have a little bit of fun while we're doing this. Uh, if you've seen my contests, you know, well, you probably don't know. Because most of you haven't seen my contest, and I haven't built enough entertainment in... Well, Tony, you're already in. What do you do? The other people have to join. They have to tell me they're in. Um, Tony, you have to you have to raise your hand. Tell me you're going to do it this time. <laughs> Hold your feet to the fire, and we are going to make that happen. I'm actually, by the way, speaking of this, if you really, really want, if I know Tony's already in the program. Um, if you really, really want, and you're still not sure, and maybe you feel like you can't afford this, and I haven't told you the dollar value, I haven't told you what it costs, but I think it's absolutely dirt cheap and probably doesn't cost enough. Or, let me say, it will cost more soon. Uh, but it's three ninety-seven. I'll give you the. I'll give you the clue. It's three ninety-seven, and there's probably about two thousand dollars of value in what I have taught so far with the group that's in there now. Uh, if you take Monica as an example, she brought in for her client over twenty-five hundred dollars in the first two weeks. I don't know what her current figure is. Well, actually, she said last Friday that. Um, she thinks the client's bringing in an additional $2,000 per week. So that would be, since it's been running three weeks, that would be, I don't know, $2,500, $4,500 worth of income. Who doesn't want income? Huh? I do. Um, I just got reminded that I have a meeting in 30 minutes that I forgot about. Uh, another interesting gentleman who is wanting to run multiple contests. Um, Tony, thanks for tuning in. Tony's signing off because it's 1230 in the morning in, in Oz land. I thought you were in Australia. Isn't Oz? I don't know. Is that New Zealand? New Zealand is. I'm confused. It's, it's still early in the morning for me. I'm sorry. Oz. The Wizard of Oz. So you're behind the curtain, Tony. You're the guy behind the curtain? Anyway. I am doing an affiliate program, by the way. If you want to say you can't afford the three ninety seven, I'm doing an affiliate program for you guys. If you want to help me get people into this campaign, uh, I know Allie, for example, Allie Thompson is going to. I have to get her the link today. Uh, be an affiliate, and what I'm doing is offering twenty five percent, which is a hundred dollars, twenty five percent for the first. Uh, four, if you get five people to sign up, I'm giving you 50%. So, if you want to get in for free, <laughs> all you gotta do is get four people to come in and you can get for free. You get the fifth one and I'll double your income and I'll actually pay you to be in the program. Isn't that awesome? I will pay you to be in the program if you bring in four people. <sighs> okay, five people. Four people and it's free. So how about that? I'm still not convinced. Okay, just bring people to me and I will help you get them in and I will pay you that $100 per person. Make, in, make five people and I'll double that to $200 per person. This is, this is a deal you can't beat. Help me get people involved in this. Because I know that a lot of people should be doing this. And this is why I keep doing the Facebook Lives, is to help educate you, to get you to understand what the value of this is. Uh, Eleanor, thank you. I didn't see you pop in. Eleanor says, sounds good. So thank you for raising your hand. Let's chat about how to make that happen. Would love to have you involved. Allie Thompson is involved in the first version of Win Together. Last Friday, she was at 1,800 leads in her campaign for her first giveaway. Now, she'd done some giveaways before, but she'd never done it the Mitch way. 
and in her first campaign without doing any Facebook ads, without doing anything special. Now, she had a group of people that uh, she also already has involved in her program. Um, so she simply did two Facebook posts, one to each of her groups, and she had a thousand people signed up. And why is that important, by the way? So Allie has, say, 6,000 people in her Facebook group. So somebody tell me, answer this question. If you have a Facebook group, say of a thousand people, how many of those people can you email directly? How many people, if you have a Facebook group of a thousand, say it's two thousand, say it's three thousand, the answer is still going to be the same. What's the answer? Somebody give me the answer. How many people can you email in a Facebook group, and I know there's a delay, so I'm stalling a little bit. This is a simple question. How many people in your Facebook group do you have the email that you can directly access them? <sighs> Nobody's answering. There must be a really, really long delay, or I am i won't make fun of you if you make the wrong answer. But this answer is pretty simple. It's the biggest key on your numeric keyboard. Well, besides the enter key, there's a hint. No! Eleanor, good try. Thank you for answering the question. You can't email all the people in a Facebook group. Good try. The answer is the other direction, all the way at the bottom. The answer is zero. You have no emails unless you've specifically asked them questions as they signed up and you asked them to give you their email address. But you cannot email those people directly. Facebook does not give you their email address. So if you, like Allie, ran a contest to your Facebook group and you post on there, hey, I'm running a contest and she's gotten 1,800 emails, those are all people that are in her group and some people that were referred because of the virality of the whole thing. But she had zero of those emails before because Facebook doesn't let you have that data. Now, there are some ways you could go cheat and scrape that data, and I won't get into all that, but that's all black hat stuff you're not supposed to do. So if you have a group of 100,000 people, you can do promotions to them, but you can't email them. And email is your number one asset. If Facebook were to shut down tomorrow and you got 100,000 people in your Facebook group, you're stuck. You have no access to any of those 100,000 people. But if you had their email address, you could email them every freaking day if you wanted to about some offer or something, some educational piece. You could do all kinds of things if you have their email address. Brett says, everyone should be asking for email address to join your Facebook group. Yes, you should. The 99.9% .9 of the people don't know they should be doing that. Brett, if it's so easy to get 1,000 people in a group, then how come mine only has 375? Huh? Because I haven't been working very hard at growing my group. But you're right. You should be asking in part of the questions when they sign up what their email address is and then you have to copy and paste that somewhere else or if maybe there's a way of getting all the answers for all the questions but that's a manual pain in the tuchus if you ask me of course brett probably has a va or somebody to do that for him who do you i don't know i'm teasing just having fun um but typically most people don't have any access to any of those people except through facebook now, I'll give you another statistic. And I don't have the chart that I can just pop up in front of you, but a statistic from a couple of weeks ago. A study was done of 2008 traffic in Facebook and engagement for Facebook posts. People who actually engaged and said like or commented was at 0 0.9, I'm sorry, 0.09%, or basically one-tenth of 1% 1 of the people interacted with Facebook posts from a Facebook page last year. That's horrible. 
<laughs> I mean, that statistically, if you put it, uh, if you have a group of a thousand Facebook people, Brett, the interactions on that is minuscule. Whereas if you have a, those thousand people in email list and you get 10% opens and you email those people, you're getting 100 opens versus on Facebook group or a Facebook page interactions at being 0.1%. That's like, what, 10 people out of every thousand? So you're better off having an email list. Now, I, I am not saying you shouldn't have social media, that you shouldn't be building your social media groups, your Facebook groups, but the interactions in those groups is pretty low. If you grow your group to 100,000 people, then you should be able to make some money off of that. Absolutely. Uh, but, see, <laughs> thanks, Brett. Brett says, yes, very low. Um, anyway, I'll, thank you for saying that. I'll post this so everybody can see it. My email list is much better than my group stats. Yes, absolutely true. Getting resp especially the way Facebook keeps tuning their algorithm. It's I was I, I confess I was surfing Facebook this morning on my phone at 4 a.m. I sh was trying to be asleep but I wasn't. <laughs> and I was scrolling 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 and what drove me crazy and I've noticed this for a couple of days now and I don't know I don't know what's going on, but by the time I scrolled for 10-15 minutes, the same stories that I saw yesterday started appearing. And, and more and more Facebook posts from yesterday or the day before started appearing in my feed. And I'm like, why is this old stuff showing up? I thought I was supposed to be getting new stuff. I don't understand. And so, of course, I made it refresh and got some new stuff at the top. But then... As I scrolled, I kept getting the same old stuff. I'm like, I don't want to see the old stuff. I've already seen it. So I quit surfing. It's their fault. All right. Anyway, um, I have a meeting coming up in 20 minutes. I appreciate all of you people who have tuned in and responded. And those who have tuned in and not responded, I appreciate you too. And I someday I'm going to get a stable desk. <laughs> My stand-up desk is... Um, I've forgotten the brand name. There is no brand name on here. Anyway, it sits on a regular desk, so it's not as stable as a regular sit-down stand-up desk. And I tend to lean on it, which makes it wobble a little bit. So I apologize if I'm making you seasick. Thank you for turning in. I'm going to sign off for today and get ready for my meeting. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask them below or tune in hopefully tomorrow. If I can be uh, consistent, I will appear tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. <sighs> Struggle with that all the time. Anyway, happy to have you on. If you're interested in the Win Together program, let me know. If you are interested in selling, helping me bring people into the Win Together program because you're not ready yet and making a little bit of cash, let me know because I will help you do that as well. Uh, sharing and commenting is always great. Of course, probably if you're seeing this, you're already on my Facebook feed and friends. So thank you being a friend in social media world. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. And this time we are out. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. 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 But when will I see you again? Oh, never. Never. Never? Well, that's the worst goodbye I've ever heard. And you stole it from a movie.